So what happened on SmackDown this week, you ask? Well, we're going to dive right in. And why is that? Because just like our tribal chief, Roman Reigns, we don't wait for anybody. We want answers and we want them now. We're entitled to them. Make sure you smash the subscribe button and follow the show on Twitter. And as I referenced, our tribal chief kicked off the show because he wanted Edge's answer about who he was going to challenge at WrestleMania for their championship. And he wanted it tonight. Not tomorrow. Not a week from now. Not after the next WWE Network event. He wants to know now. And the most poignant thing that Roman Reigns said in this entire promo was absolutely true when he asked the question, why the hell would Edge waste his time on Raw and NXT? Roman's the big dog. Roman's the head of the table. Roman's the tribal chief. Why would Edge want to waste his time with Drew number two or whatever the hell is going on in NXT? Like, let's stop tiptoeing around the tulips and let's start smelling the effing roses here. There's only one match you want, one match you need at WrestleMania Edge, and you know this is the one. So stop pissing off the tribal chief and wasting his damn time. Outrageous, I say. Outrageous. But we would get some more action on that later in the night. But I digress. Yeah, I gotta, gotta admit, as I was watching the show this week, like, I was having a hard time paying attention. Like, the Dominic, Dominic Mysterio Baron Corbin match, okay. Like, I'm trying to find my fucks and I'm all out of them. Uh, that's... <laughs> I don't know what more I could really say. Looks like Dominic did a little bit better in the 619 this week. Dominic's getting help to win, but Baron's the one you're supposed to hate. Like, I'm really trying to figure out what the whole purpose or premise of any of this is. Uh, Daniel Bryan ends up losing to Cesaro, which is your further validation that apparently Cesaro has re-signed with WWE. And, you know, solid match between these two. But I, I do want to ask the question, like, this dude that just jobbed to freaking Cesaro is who you wanted, in part, the WrestleMania main event built around. This guy, Daniel Bryan, who just jobbed to Cesaro, is who you wanted to have face the Tribal Chief at WrestleMania. You're insane! Respectfully, insane in the membrane. Unbelievable. Bailey beats Ruby Riot, and I got to admit, like, I wrote down my notes as I do when I watch every show so that way I can remember what to come back to and what to talk about. I didn't write anything here. It wasn't anything of uh, note other than, obviously, Billy Kay. You know, that's the only thing, maybe, but that's it. She, really good, wish more talents on roster, took advantage of their opportunities, no matter how bad they were, and made the most out of them instead of whining and bitching about them. Like, that's how you get respect. That's how you get over. That's how you become a key cog in the wheel. So again, my respects to Billy Kay for what she did. One of the big plot lines here as well, just like with the Tribal Chief and Edge, was who was good, Bianca going to choose to face off against at WrestleMania? And you can see where they're going. You know it's going to happen eventually. But, you know, I guess... Why go there right away if you don't have to? Leave a little bit of suspense. No reason to blow your wad immediately like you're an 18-year-old getting some for the first time. Um, but please, please, please notice one thing. Unlike the WWE, Bianca at least was referencing that Sasha Banks was doing something on The Mandalorian. Like, why are the talent doing a better job of putting over the other talent in terms of what they do outside of WWE than the freaking WWE does? It's ridiculous. And as Reginald came out and interrupted Bianca and was weirdly talking about how if she's going to face Sasha at WrestleMania, she will lose. Like, it was that feeling of inevitability of dread of, you know, part of my whole concern about Sasha and Bianca at WrestleMania is you really don't want either one of them to lose. Like, that's the bad thing about it. Sasha really needs to win at Mania and certainly doesn't need to lose. Bianca really needs to win at WrestleMania certainly doesn't need to lose. 
So either WWE is going to screw us all up and screw both of them up in the process by doing some wishy-washy tie or double count-out crap finish at Mania, or they're going to interject a third lady in there to take the pinfall. And the way they frame this and the way they position this with Carmella sitting there as Reginald's talking, I said, oh, Christ, please tell me that's not what they're going to do. They're going to have Carmella be the designated job girl at Mania to protect one of these ladies. Please don't. Oh, no. <laughs> but they might be. Uh, maybe you could shoehorn Bailey back into the mix. And if you were going to do a third wheel, I'd much rather have that third wheel be Bailey at this point in time. Because then you can have Bailey eat the pin. But that's the downside here of Bianca and Sasha. There's potentially a lot of upside, a tremendous amount of upside. But there's a downside. And the downside is if you do do straight up, one of them loses and one of them wins, and it feels like it's in a position where you potentially ruin some momentum if you have one of them lose at Mania. Here, it's the lesser of evils by throwing a third person in there, but then it kind of takes away from the buildup between the two. But maybe it does it because it allows you to shoehorn a heel in, like a Carmella or hopefully maybe a Bailey, so that way Sasha and Bianca could kind of play off of her and then play to each other without one of them necessarily having to take a full-fledged character turn, which won't really be helpful for either one of them. So we'll see what happens. It's, it's a feeling of dread, but it's probably a feeling more so of inevitability and necessity as to why they're potentially doing that. Let me know what you think, though, in the comments. Do you think it should just be Sasha and Bianca straight up, knowing what the consequences could be? Or do you want somebody shoehorned in as that third person to make it a triple threat uh, to eat the pin? I'm curious. And you got the Dirty Dogs taking on Otis and Chad Gable. Excuse me. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. Every week I watch SmackDown, and every week they just have to have this son of a bitch on the show. Oh, God. And a good reminder again, you just had to break up Otis and Tucker. You just had to break up Heavy Machinery. So that we can go right back to putting Otis in another tag team situation. Because WWE does things at the drop of a hat off of Vince's whims, and then they have no idea what the hell they're going to do to follow it up. The only thing that was really tolerable about this, because this match again had <laughs> Dolph Ziggler, was the Street Profits doing whatever the hell they were doing on commentary. Now that was fun. That was different. They had some energy. They were kind of off the wall and crazy, and I liked that. And anything to distract away from me having to sit there and sit through and suffer through a match featuring... <laughs> Dolph Ziggler, especially when his team wins. Um, the, the, perhaps the craziest or weirdest thing of the night was how they just randomly brought up the whole thing of, you know, hey, 33 years ago today, February 5th, 1998, main event, 33 million people tuned in to watch the ultimate rematch, Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant and all of this. And it's like, man, that's kind of random. Oh, you're going to sit there and do that. Because after all, it's February. Nothing says celebrating Black History Month quite like Hulk Hogan. That's troll level Vince and a half that there ever fucking has been. And then they were pumping it up throughout the night that Hogan's going to come on and he's going to tell you who he thinks Edge should face at WrestleMania. And you're going to tie into him and Edge winning the tag belts back on SmackDown on July 4th, 4th of July, 2002. And Edge is like, gee, thanks a lot for associating me with you and tying me down to you. And then weirdly Hogan cuts a pre-recorded promo with Jimmy Hart in the background talking about how Andre the Giant was a stinky fart. And then asked the question of what you're going to do, Drew or Roman, when Edge runs wild on you at Mania. And then we totally didn't get the whole purpose or premise for why the hell it was being billed that Hogan was going to appear to begin with. And of all times, Black History Month, somebody's got their finger on the pulse. <laughs> the triple threat IC title, Sami Zayn once again screwed once again, I don't even know what more to say at this point. The match was solid, but I, I'm going to be clear. Like, you knew Big E was going to win this, and you're just waiting to get to the main event because you knew it was going to be Edge and Roman facing off in some way, shape, or form. Let's, let's be clear. Let's be totally realistic. And that's all that mattered because it was main event time was going to be Edge, and was he going to give us an answer? Was he going to give our tribal chief, the head of the table, Roman Reigns, was he going to give him an answer? And of course they had to sit there 
these two Canadian fucks thick as maple syrup and sets up Roman like the dastardly villain, the ultimate opportunist heel that he is so that way Kevin Owens can sneak attack Pearl Harbor job, our tribal chief Roman Reigns. Here's Roman Reigns staring you straight down in the face and wanting an answer, which is a reasonable request because he wants to have time to prepare. He has to figure out the marketing. Like There's so many responsibilities on the table for the head of the table and our tribal chief. And Edge sits there and does this mother canuckin' crap. That's crap. Why they gotta bring Kevin Owens into it at this point? I don't know. You know, so for all intents and purposes, you're launching towards Edge and Roman at WrestleMania. It's certainly what it feels like at this moment, but you know, why, why are you gonna shoehorn in Kevin Owens? He's already lost to Roman three times. Like, we probably should be done with that at this point. I'm just saying. And as far as Edge goes, yeehaw, I was happy you won the Rumble because you were the best possible opponent for the Tribal Chief at WrestleMania. You're the best story. You're the best possible person that you can put in that spot. You are worthy of a WrestleMania main event. But now, 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 you'll find out that when you join the Island of Relevancy, it's an entirely different ball game right there. So you guys tell me in the comments, what did you think of SmackDown this week? What do you think about Edge's heel tactics here over our hero, the Tribal Chief, Roman Reigns? What about Hogan making an appearance during Black History Month and then not even sticking to the script of what the fuck he was supposed to be talking about? Nah, it's one of the best of SmackDown shows this week, I'll put it that way. Although Roman was certainly in peak form.